Welcome to the Reconciliation Conversation. We want this podcast to be a space where we can expose hate, encourage love, equip for healthy reconciliation, and emphasize unity so that all people can know their value together as one. So welcome to another edition of the Reconciliation Conversation podcast. As always, my name is Derek Delane. I'm here with my good man, Jason Dukes. How's it going, bro? Going all right. Going all right. Uh, glad. I think you had a little bit of time on vacation. Glad you're back. You, you, is, it, yes. is, it, is, it, is it even okay? Like, can you say? Can, let's educate our listeners for a minute. Can I say to you, yeah. you look tanner. Can I Listen, say that? Can, like, can I, I do. Listen, don't ignore it. Like, this glow is popping right now. Like, there's nothing it's wrong with that. For real. Like, you're radiant. Like, you, 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 you just radiant. Listen, you got, and, like, the coral shirt on, to like, it you're, on. Like, you're in Florida. Like, you're in Florida. Listen, man. I got the black background and the coral shirt just to make it pop a little bit more. I that love it. That was intentional. I love the it. The fact that you noticed know means so much to me, Jason. It really does. <laughs> I'm missing out. So, uh, but listen, I'm excited about, about today. Um, we have a, a guest with us um, who, as a matter of fact, uh, if they've listened, if our listeners listened a couple uh, uh, weeks ago, uh, we had a, a gentleman on by the name of, of Jared come on and he was sharing with us a little bit about uh, a new adventure that he was starting um, with the We Are Ambassadors, um, that the podcast and the uh, social media and things like that. And we wanted to highlight that as much as possible. Um, well, yep. we have one of uh, the, the co-hosts of, of that podcast with us today. This young lady, she's actually on staff uh, at a church in Ames, Iowa. Uh, she's working with their college ministry there, the SALT Network. Uh, we're excited to have her join us today on the Reconciliation Conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, Persia Gambles. How's it going, Ms. Persia? I'm good. Um, really glad to be here. Uh, this is really, really cool. I think... From what I've heard um, of the Reconciliation Conversation podcast and just like different things that you guys put out, I am I've been helped and encouraged. And so hmm. I'm, I'm humbled right now to be talking to you guys. It's really awesome. Well, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. And we actually we actually said this uh, earlier and we feel like we need to say it again. Uh, but yeah. uh, Persia is actually uh, one of our, our very first uh, female guests that we have on on the podcast. And. Uh, I'm excited about it for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, both Jason and I agree, uh, we need to elevate uh, the voices of, of women uh, more and more in this conversation, uh, but uh, doubly more important, I think we need to elevate the voices of, of black women in this conversation. And the fact that we have uh, Ms. Persia on here today uh, to, uh, to kind of set the tone for that um, is huge for us. And we're excited that yeah. you'd be willing to, to join us today. So thank you very much. So Heck good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's, I, I kind of want to, want to jump right in. Um, so obviously there's a lot, a lot going on in, in our, in our culture right now. And we would love just to hear from a little bit about what you're seeing from your perspective with what's going on in our, in our country, specifically in Ames, Iowa, um, in the context uh, that you're, that you're there, um, that you're living in there. Uh, just kind of what you, what you're seeing, what's your perspective? What are your thoughts um, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I think a lot of people's eyes are being opened right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, both people that, um, you know, I get to lead and serve in a, in a college ministry context, like students of student leaders within our college ministry at this church. Um, but then also people that I work with and people that I work for, um, a lot of people, who I know are God honoring, gospel believing Christians, you know, the cultural moment we're in along with the, the cabin fever nature of quarantining and COVID and all that stuff, it, it's, it's brought about a, a level of awareness to things pertaining to race hmm. that was needed, but just wasn't there. Um, hmm. And, and not that those people didn't care or don't care, but it's just like eyes are being open that, that it's, it, it's a watershed moment. Um, relationally mm, for me yeah. with a lot of people but then I, I think administratively and like co like co collectively for the church as a whole at least from what I'm seeing in Ames um, mm -hmm. which is really necessary because I mean a little breakdown of, of Ames as a whole like geographic I mean demographically um, the 
it's like 2.56% black. And that mm. equates to anywhere from around 600 to 1500 people in the whole city wow. who are African American or what I identify as, as black. And that's not a lot of people. Like that's no, that's no, not that's even not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a full Coachella session. You know what I mean? Like that, that's <laughs> so few people. Um, and it, you know, Ames being the city that it is, a lot of those are like families. You know, like c- collective numbers of, of 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 black people. You know, and so moving here from Texas, not that Lubbock, Texas, was the epicenter of diversity or anything like that, but it it yeah. it had more. You know, but seeing the masses seeing that other like 94% really have their eyes open in a huge way. Most of them is really good and helpful and encouraging to me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like awakened hearts, you know, a lot of, mm. um, a lot of people really start to say like, how, how have I been negligent towards this in a way that does not honor God and does not honor my brother or sister in Christ, you know, um, yeah. and it's led to some really helpful and hard, but, but ultimately good and necessary conversation. That's good. That's good. So let me, let me, let me build on that. So, cause obviously there's, you know, a specific experience that you're seeing, but what about for, for yourself, what's an experience in your story that highlights why you care about kind of what's going on why you care about diversity and reconciliation and, and oneness. What, what has happened in your life that's kind of sparked that for you? Mm-hmm. Well, being a, a black woman in a predominantly white, complementarian, uh, reformed, like Baptist church, um, and I am Christian, reformed, complementarian, all those things, you still feel pretty other all the time. Mm you know, in a sea mm-hmm. of, you know, marshmallow, you're the only chocolate chip, you know, it, it's like it, it, you, you see it tangibly, you feel your otherness pretty tangibly. And so mm-hmm. being a, a great believer in how God unifies us through the gospel, I want to be a part of what makes it look more like heaven. I want to be a part of what makes Cornerstone or, or the church that I'm at right now, I want to be a part of what makes it look a little bit more like heaven even if only selfishly for myself, but then also for the other, like other black women that come here and feel that otherness, I want them to feel known, yeah. seen, heard, loved, valued. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good, man. I, I love that. Uh, not only do I love that, um, I, I have this desire for s'mores right now. Out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, like that's, that's good. That's good. Cause I think a lot of times we don't, I think we miss out on truly understanding how what we're doing now, how it sets the stage for those to come, right? Um, You know, depending on when you're listening to this, uh, we just lost, you know, John Lewis, right? And like the different things that that he and, and Pastor CT were doing along with, you know, Dr. MLK Jr., right? Like there was a lot that they did that is now giving us an opportunity to have conversations like this, right? Yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in circles and influences and spheres that we may not have had opportunity to have if we weren't standing on their shoulders, yeah. right? Yep. And so you and I and many others, man, we have an opportunity now to be bridges for the next generation or for our peers. Uh, unfortunately, though, we know that you know, being a bridge oftentimes means that, you know, we were stepped on, right? Yeah. Uh, and that, that can be frustrating. Um, that can be tiring. I feel like that's why I've got so much gray in my beard already as, you know, such a young guy, because this work is, 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 is good work, uh, but it's tiring. It can be exhausting. Um, but I'm yeah, thankful really. that, that, you're, that you're sticking with it and you're, and you're doing uh, what you feel is what, you know, the Lord is calling you into. And not just that, but the fact that, like we know what the coming kingdom is going to look like, right? Uh, and so we we are giving people a taste of of what's to come. So I appreciate you saying that, Persia. I really do. Yeah, I was going to say we. I, I love. I mean, you sparked a, a memory for me when you were talking about being um, a chocolate chip in the sea of Oreos. I mean, uh, sea of marshmallows. Marshmallow. And um, our staff, the church family I'm a part of, on staff with here in the Nashville area. Um, it it. 
we had a guy come last year from Howard University and, and do some diversity training with us and our staff. And uh, he was he was awesome. But but what I loved about what he said is he ended up showing a video, which you can Google and find on YouTube, um, about being an O in the middle of X's and and how being the O, the other, uh, you know, which is a little bit of what it stands for, although he gave some other references too, but how that can be great on one hand, right? Because you you do stand out, you do have a chance to speak up, you do have, and this is in a culture that welcomes it, right? Is He's giving that context. But in a culture that doesn't welcome it, it can be incredibly difficult. And mm-hmm. and But in a culture that welcomes it, you can go and you can become burnt out, right? Because you get asked by, you know, everyone to be the O in the room, to be the O in this, to be the O in that, to be the O. And I'm sure you felt some of that. It sparked that when you feel that. I mean, how, how do you, are you being called on right now in, in, in this context of what's going on? Are you being called on more than maybe you have before? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, <laughs> And, and I'm thankful for this in a lot of ways, but um, it does feel strange to be asked into rooms and meetings and uh, things like that, that I wasn't before. Um, and now it's like, oh, oh my gosh, please tell us what it is. What is it like to be you, you know? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful to have the, the platform to leverage, the small platform to leverage in a way that honors God and, and, and hopefully loves my people well, but um, it, it's bizarre now, you know, um, but I understand the, the context around it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're in, you're a part of this church family. And I think if we're really candid on, we know that churches speaking of that XO element, we know that some churches welcome it. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately that feels like it's more a few than a many, um, but we know that a few churches welcome it. We know that a lot don't. Talk about why why would we expect reconciliation right now in our culture mm-hmm. when we're not seeing it in the local church? Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think society as a whole, secularly, um, people are just tired of waiting. You know, tired of waiting for whatever their idea of progress or their idea of um, help or redemption in a secular sense, whatever that looks like. Um, I, I don't know how long slaves in 1619 felt like it would take, but nobody felt 400 years, you know? Mm. And so mm. I, I think, I think that people are tired of waiting, but then within the church, I think there, there's an expectation to be said for the fact that like, the explicit nature of the gospel message is that we messed up perfect intimacy with God through our sin, but through a son, Jesus Christ, we are granted vertical reconciliation with God, despite ourselves, not anything we can do ourselves. So that grants us unification with God, but then that also grants us reconciliation from ourselves to one another. And so that unifies us. If we're unified, if, if, you know, First Corinthians is right. And like, if we're a family, if we're a body of believers, if I see, you know, my arm is about to fall off or it keeps getting chopped off and somehow it grows back or, you know, like there's some sort of oppression happening to this part of the body specifically, I'm a hell. You know, it, it, it is innate. It should be innate and inherent to the Christian experience to care about the oppression and abuse and marginalization of those without a voice. Um, yeah. but unfortunately, in a lot of times it's not, um, and, and, and that's sad, but it, it's something that is not new. Um, yeah. Ken, am I allowed to say you better preach as, as a complimentary? <laughs> <Can> I... <laughs> I'm going to say you better preach, girl. You better preach. That, for real. You better preach. <laughs> for real. That's good. Man, it's just it's just tr- true. Like I, I think that it should be inherent to our 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 the image we bear should represent yeah. how we fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. It's good. Girl. It's good. Come on. 
That's <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. So then, with with that being said, then so would you say that it's along that vein as to why you guys started We Are Ambassador? Yeah, I think I think being at the church we're at, like resources are something that we take very seriously as a church as a whole. Um, but we came across realizing that like in terms of racial reconciliation, fighting for racial justice, even being equipped, like what, what does it mean to have a theology of race, you know, mm. a, a, an accurate, biblical, helpful, clear theology of race. Uh, I think, I think Jared, like Jared Cole, you know, other guest of another episode, like, um, he noticed that, you know, and, and God began to stir in his heart, like building out some sort of platform, some sort of, of coalition to be helpful in that regard to the people of, of our congregation and then whomever would, would find it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the hope, at least my hope, is that through the resources we share, the things that we discuss, the things that we kind of put on the forefront of what the ambassador stands for, um, we hope to be an illustration of Micah 6, 8, you know, to love, to love mercy, do justice, and to walk humbly with our God. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that hopefully that's what we're attempting to do. And that definitely is the heart behind why we started it. Um, I hope, I know, I hope if our listeners don't take anything else away from this episode, that they'll take away that question you just asked, what is a healthy theology of race? Like that, that is significant. Um, mm -hmm. when it comes to the way we're processing this as the church. That's so good. So as we wrap up, if you aren't listening to the We Are Ambassador podcast, you should be. Uh, we've posted yep. some of your clips to our story on Instagram and, and on Facebook. And and, um, and so we're, we're definitely encouraging folks to check it out. I think. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, we love that what you're doing, and you already, though, I know, have offered really significant, important uh, action steps that people can take. But for our listeners, what are a couple simple takeaways, whether they're new to this and they're, they're really mm -hmm. trying to take a first step, or they have been in it, but really want to take that next step toward reconciliation and oneness? Yeah, I, I think... I think it's um, pretty inherent to, I mean, a Christian that feels convicted, like, what do I do? You know, like, like, how do I be a part of what makes this better? You know, where I realize I haven't been. And I, I, I something that I regularly encourage people to do is to go to God. Like, first step should be, God, search my heart and help me know mm. where, have I, where, where have I sinned against you and sinned against others in this? And confess those things to God and then to someone else that you like an inner circle person say, hey, like, I don't want to walk in negligence or ignorance anymore because my ignorance can no longer be used as innocence. Mm -hmm. um, and so and so I think <laughs> you, you should say it again. You should say it again. Man. <laughs> I mean, my, my <laughs> Now that I realize I was ignorant, ignorant in this way, my ignorance can no longer be used as, as innocence. Mm, and so, so th that becomes a, a, a devotional thing between you and God, but then it becomes a communal thing when you invite someone else into that space and say, hey, help me, you know, like, like hold me accountable. Make sure this isn't just like some camp high, you know, like, like, oh, I see this, I read woke church and this really influenced me, you know, make sure this is like, like, I want this to be a life change type thing. So start in your own heart, like look in the mirror, like God help me to see Holy Spirit be active and vocal in my heart to show me where I've gone wrong in this. And then from there, hopefully you can begin the, the work of, of education, of equipping, of like, help me see what I didn't see before more you know, in the scriptures, in solid resources, in voices that I respect and care about that can lead and disciple me in this. And, 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 and listen, that is a destabilizing place to be. That is a humbling place to be because it says, fam, I don't know. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it, it openly admits that. But when we're Christians, we admit we don't know how to live holy. Like we don't know how to, yeah, we real. don't know how to walk righteously. We need someone, namely Jesus, to die the death that we couldn't and, and therefore give us new eyes, give us a new heart. And so this is the same type of thing. We, we still need to rely on God. We still need to rely on others and we need to walk in humility as we seek to educate ourselves. So destabilizing place to be, but then your heart is transformed and a transformed heart will always lead to transforming action because you literally, you can't like, like I see the world differently now. So therefore I cannot interact with it or people within it diff like this as I did before. And so I think literally starts in your own heart, starts with other Christians that you're already doing community with and then begin to educate and then live out of what you're educated on. Um, so things like this podcast, helpful resources, you know, um, because we, we've, we've genuinely been granted new eyes, new hearts, new minds by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit because of Jesus, that gives us the ability to, to, to have humility to say, hey, like, I didn't know. And I'm asking God to, to show me my sin in this. And then now I can, I can walk in open accountability, like walk in the light with God and in humility say, okay, what do I do now? Because from a transformed heart, comes transforming action. Mm. Mm. That's good. Again, preach. Like you you out here For real? truth bombs left and right. Like God Ali, this man, yeah, she got come back. <laughs> uh, hey girl. She she's she gotta be she, she she'll be a recurring guest. So I, I, and can yeah. I just call it out? Like, gr girlfriend done said, can I say that? Is that all right? Because that's what I grew up saying. Gr <laughs> girlfriend done said, she said, don't be having a camp high. On the, <laughs> camp on the, she said, that was like, did you, did on. you hear that? I heard it. I, did you see me? I chuckled. I <laughs> yes, I know you did. I, I'm like, come on now. She called us out. Like, we can't. <laughs> okay. But that's what it, that's the, like, for real, though. That's, that's a great yeah, challenge. That's what happens. It happens. And that's a great thought. Like we, we, we talked about that, right? Like we, we have, there are individuals who will see a lot of this work, will jump into it, man, this is what we're supposed to do. And then they'll like, yo, right. And they'll, 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 they'll fall away. And I think just yep. kind of what you, what you laid out, Persia, that's, that's real. Like we, that's, real. that's real. I'm, I can't reiterate it because you already said it all, enough. Like that was, that was good. That was good. Um, well done. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So listen, that you, if, uh, if people want to follow you, right. If they want to continue to see these, these truth bombs you out here dropping <laughs> on a regular basis, how, how can people, how can people follow you on, on social media? Where are you? Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, they'll also see a fair amount of natural hair stuff, just because that's something I'm passionate about. Um, but yes. I'm on Instagram, on Facebook, and I do a lot of stuff with the ambassador, as we talked about. Um, and so those are the probably like I'm at Persia Gambles on Instagram. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. And then uh, uh, the website for ambassadors, we are ambassador.com. Uh, and their their Instagram. I just want to make sure is it we dot r dot ambassadors, right? Yes, sir. Right. That is exactly it. Good job. Uh, but Persia, we thank you so 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 much uh, for for joining us on the reconciliation conversation. It has been a pleasure uh, yep. to 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 learn from. Um, again, you out you was out here dropping bombs today, and so <laughs> hopefully our listeners will, will enjoy it in, as as well uh, when they when they tune in. So. Uh, again, uh, as always, my name is Derek Delane, my good man, Jason. Uh, we're so excited that you joined us at the Reconciliation Conversation. Uh, we'll see you again later on as we continue the conversation. Peace out. Thank you for joining in on the Reconciliation Conversation. Remember, you can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Recon Combo. You can also stay connected with us through our website, reconciliationconversation.com, or feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel under No More Night Media. We look forward to continuing the conversation with you next time.